good evening, everyone. Have you had a good holiday today? Let's pray and get, get started. Thank you, Heavenly Merciful Father. We thank you for you gathering us today before your word. And you gave us this opportunity to get salvation this week. In this time, we pray that you open our hearts and mind so that the word you want to let us know is planted in our spirits and also we may understand and realize that the real state of our spirit and we may know that why we have to get salvation why it's so important so please teach us with your word we really want that none of us far away, far away from you but all of us get, get salvation and become your children. So please God be mercy on us and be with us in this time. We prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and of your end of age? So Matthew chapter 24 is quite famous chapter. It's all about the signs of Jesus coming at the same time, uh, the signs of the end of days. So we've learned the Bible for three days. So those who joined the Bible seminar from the first day up to yesterday, uh, they must have, um, understand that the why this Bible is called as the Word of God. Uh, as you know, the Bible, um, the history and the future of all um, the, the history and the future of the world is written in advance. And not only that, but also the history and uh, the future of us is also uh, recorded in the Bible in, in, uh, in advance. Uh, we know this is the only evidence that God can give, right? who can tell us the human history from the beginning to the end, and even our future. So in this text, Matthew chapter 24, the Jesus disciples, they were asking Jesus about the future thing. Right? So they, they asking Jesus that, tell us Jesus, when will these things be? These things means that Jesus told them he will come back. Secondly, to this word. And then they want, wanted to know that what will happen? What will be the signs of your coming and of the end of the age? So as we learn, uh, Jesus told that, uh, told them, the uh, book of John chapter 14, 29 said, but I, I've told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. So the reason why God recorded the human history before it comes. So the prophecy, the beforehand, uh, it and it comes is only can uh, it only God can uh, do. So uh, God is to let us know. God can show our future. Only God can show us what happened after we die. And also God is able to solve our life questions. That's why God recorded all the history of the world. And of us. So, today I'm going to briefly about uh, the the signs of end days, and then the important thing uh, is why we have to uh, get salvation, 
and uh, this is very important thing in uh, our the Bible seminar. As we read yesterday, Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said, uh, the, not only this verse, many verses in the Bible says that the Israel's recovery, Israel's return, is the sign of end of the world and Jesus' second coming. So here said that the sign of the Son of Man, Jesus, will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes on the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of God, you know, a Son of Man coming. And they will gather together his elect. So we uh, watched the uh, sh short film yesterday that uh, when Jesus comes secondly, the all the morning Christians, they raptured in a, in a, all of a sudden. And then, so Jesus told about his second coming, and then he, this is, is the uh, verse 31 and 32, the connected verses. Now, and Jesus added, after he mentioned his second, second coming, and he added that, now learn this parable from the fig tree. So the Bible, in the Bible, fig tree refers to Israel. So when it branches, already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know the summer is near. So, you know, uh, when you see the old things, know that is near at the doors. And this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take, take place. So, when Jesus spoke about the second coming, at the same time, he mentioned the Israel's recovery and their, and their uh, independence. And also, it is also prophesied in Old Testament. Um, when you are in distress and all these things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn to the Lord, your God, and obey His voice, they will turn to God and they will listen to God's word in the latter days. So we are now the generation that see Jesus, they are, the, the Israelites, they are coming back to their own homeland. It means that we are living in the latter days. So we learned that the Israel is God's timepiece because the signs of end of days are very detailed at the same time as the Israel's restoration. Uh, so we need to think about the which which era, which time we are living in is helpful for us to be salvation, get salvation. So Luke chapter twelve, Jesus said that uh, it's about uh, the weather forecasting. Jesus said to the multitudes, whenever you see a cloud rising out from the west, immediately you say, a shower is coming, because the west side of Israel is the Mediterranean Sea. And then, and when you see the south wind blow, it's, it's a Sahara desert, and there will be hot weather, and there it is. And hypocrites, you can discern, you know the face of the sky, and you can predict, and you can prepare, right, of the earth. But how is it you do not discern this time? So this, this is the main point of Jesus, why he mentioned this. So he talked about the weather forecast. We do. Why we do forecast weather? Of course, in order to prepare it, right? Likewise, uh, Jesus said, we need to understand which age we are living in now, right? So which age uh, people in the time they lived? They lived with Jesus. They had, they had a great opportunity to have a conversation with Jesus Christ in person. Likewise, what age we are living in, according to the Bible. So, uh, this is the age in history of mankind, according to the Bible, the viewpoint of God. So, uh, the human history began with Adam, and from Adam to Abraham, we call this age of conscience. There was no proper Bible at the time. So by conscience, they can recognize God. And from Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, God chose Abraham, and then the history of Israel began at the time. And God gave them law, which means uh, the Old Testament, and they were elected people. But unfortunately, uh, they broke all the laws, and they killed Jesus Christ. But rather Jesus used their rejection and then Jesus 
uh, died, but he resurrected and ascended to heaven, and he accomplished salvation. And um, after G- Jewish people, they rejected the gospel, and the gospel uh, come to the, the Gentiles like us, widely open, and these two uh, nearly now, after Jesus came, is now 20, 20 uh, years is passed, right? So uh, nearly 2,000 years passed, and then during this time, so many Gentiles are set, get, get salvation. But the problem is, this period of time doesn't continue to forever. As we checked yesterday, the time is limited because until the time of Gentiles are fulfilled, Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles. And Romans chapter 11 also said, the, until the fullness of Gentiles has come in, right? Which means uh, the time of Gentiles is now ending. We're running out of time. Because I really understand that because um, these days it's really, really difficult to preach people. Because they have no interest about God, about their soul, and heaven and hell, spiritual things. Right? So I think that uh, in some, bu- some point of in the future, maybe even though we hold the Bible seminar, no one will come. Okay? So only one or 200 years ago in the UK, we can notice so many church buildings around us, right? In the UK. At the time, so many people were filled with, uh, the, so many churches filled with people and just raised their ear to hear of, from God. They want to hear, wanted to hear. So I read that uh, Charles Spurgeon, pastor in the UK, uh, his church in Metropolitan Church in Elephant Castle is still now. In 1866, in the time, the member of that church, one church, is uh, 4,366 people were gathered in one time. Right? But in our time, we can see the churches are now empty. Even they are now turning into the markets or pubs. Right? They sold in, in various uh, purposes. So, anyway, uh, according to the Bible, um, after Jesus' second coming, so the, when the fullness of Gentiles is uh, the, uh, finished, and then uh, God, Jesus will come in the air, as Jesus said, Matthew chapter 24 also uh, testifies it. And then the problem is that there's no more chance for Gentiles to get salvation. This is the problem. So the Bible, there's so many verses about Jesus' second coming. Did you know that? So many, many verses. For example, one, um, one in 25 verses is about Jesus' second coming. And after Jesus' second coming, seven year tribulation will begin. This, this also um, the very well recorded, detailed uh, from uh, the Revelation chapter 6 to 19. What will happen on the earth? So, in particular, we are now living in COVID age, right? So I think COVID-19, this virus is actually teaches us that we are really close to seven years tribulation. The Bible is not a joke. So soon, if you, uh, we will cover it. Uh, we will, uh, when we uh, learn about the, the post-corona age, is uh, nearly the same as seven year tribulations age. So before human history, people now, there was no time like us. And then after Jesus um, coming on earth, and then the, there will be millennial kingdom, and after that, there will be final judgment, and all the people will be divided into eternal heaven and eternal hell. This is a history of mankind, the pure viewpoint of God. How can I tell this to you? Because God recorded in the Bible. Because I just deliver. Uh, what the Bible said. And then the problem is, which point are we living in? Where are we? So, thankfully God let us know, can discern which age are we in by seeing signs of coming. Because Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 21, 
the chapters are all about the signs of coming. For example, let me show you some things. Matthew chapter 24 said, we read it, tell us when these will things be, and what will the sign of your coming? They heard that Jesus will come again, and of the end of the age. So, disciples also knew that Jesus coming and the end of age, it will happen at the same time. Jesus mentioned many things, but uh, we have not enough time to cover everything. But simply, some things we can cover. Uh, firstly, Jesus said that I am the Christ. They, the many will come in my name, which is false Christ, right? The false teachers, I am the Christ, will deceive many. And you will hear of words and rumors of words. And for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, die from hunger, and pestilences, epidemic disease, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Luke chapter 21, also Jesus said that uh, similar thing, and many things is almost the same. Many will come in my name and hear words and commotions in an version revolution. Many revolutions will, be ha will happen, and nations will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, great earthquake in various places, famines and pestilences, fearful signs and great signs from heaven. So among them, so we are going to look only at um, the three things she just mentioned here, three things, great earthquakes and famine and pestilences. Matthew chapter 24 also mentioned three things. So firstly, he said, there will be great earthquake in various places. Um, USGS means United States Geological Survey, the most famous organization concerning the earthquake. We can see is, uh, this diagram. Uh, it can be seen that the number of earthquakes has increased sharply from 2000. Of course, uh, there have been great earthquakes in the past, but it happened once a uh, few years, once every few years, in the past, but you can see nowadays, 2001, 2001, 2, 3, 2004, 5, 6, 2007, 8, 9. So, this sort of things never happened in the past. And also, um, I noticed that uh, some homepage they, they, um, gives us that uh, the, the uh, uh, Update it every day. Uh, can you see that uh, today is third, right? Yeah, today also happened, and two days ago happened. This only can you see the number? Yeah, we are now 2021, right? 2021 January 6, and now April 3rd. I think more than 30 or 40 happened. It's above. 6.0 multi magnitude, right? So we can easily feel something very unusual, very extraordinary. And mentioned famines. So now more and more the places are uh, the the hunger belt is wider and getting wider and wider. And have you heard that uh, the food self sufficiently? is now gradually decreasing in the UK. So that means um, the low food self-sufficiency means that overseas dependence is high. And which means when global climate disease comes and the food crisis will come at once. We are, we are now in the very dangerous situation. And also many will starve, locusts devour crops and livelihood in Pakistan. Fighting a locust plague with, uh, amid COVID-19 East Africa. Now, why only Africa? You don't know. It could be happen in the UK as well. Why not? And also, uh, locust plague warning highly mobile swarm in spark biblical catastrophe in just days. So, sh sh show you a, a simple uh, news. Uh, 
Yeah. He got 20 times, right? getting stronger and stronger. May many people think, not just it's coincidence, no, no luck. But the Bible says that plagues, they come down all at once in end of times. So lastly, the pestilences, so this we can uh, see very realistic in our time. So I read the uh, speech of William Stewart, who was in the uh, 1969 U.S. Congress. This is his speech at the time. He said, it's time to finish the Fed pestilence last page. The war against the pestilences is over. He said that well, we won against the pestilences. No more pestilences at we are now. But now, the Bible pointed out the pestilences as a main sign of the end times. The Bible said that this will never over. In particular, this sign is very real realistic to us uh, these days. So even in our era, high-tech era, the medicine, science, technology, they cannot stop viruses. The, Bi the Bible pointed out this one as a, a sign of end times. And I searched Google what the pestilence means, and fatal epidemic disease. So it's nearly, not nearly, the, the more than one year, just one virus, because of one virus, all whole unit, whole the, the, the earth is covered with this virus. Very quickly, it spread it, and no one can stop it. Even uh, developed countries, they are suffer from this virus. Now, the number of cases, more than 130 million people, and 2 million passed away because of that. And the Bible said, the pestilences means a deadly and overwhelming disease affect the entire community. On Black Plague, we know, uh, this is a, a certain year pestilence. And also, the pestilence is also one of the four horsemen of the Apocalypse in the Book of Revelation. So, uh, we can see this uh, sign with our Bible, which mentioned in Revelation chapter 6. From Revelation chapter 6 to 19, it's all about disease in the 70th Revelation. So, uh, we remember that yesterday, uh, God led uh, the Ezekiel, the prophet, to a valley and show, showed him a vision, right? I think he might, uh, he didn't understand that. What is the mean? What, what's the mean? What, um, what does it mean? But uh, in our time, it was being realized because the Israelite restoration, God tried to uh, show him with a vision, but he didn't understand that what it happened, right? Likewise, God showed Apostle John this vision and then uh, he might understood. He might not understand that at the time, but it surely will come true. So he saw four horses in seven years tribulation time. Firstly, he saw the white horse. He is conquering and conquer. And another ho another horse is fiery red. He had gray sword, and he take peace from the earth. And black horse. I had a pair of scales. And first one is pale horse. You know the pale is a color color of sick person. So the power is given to them over one fourth of the earth. So twenty five percent of people will pass away because of that four horses plague. To kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. So it can be shown like this um, picture. Maybe he saw this vision. Revelation chapter 6 is related to uh, Matthew chapter 24, right? We remember that. So first he mentioned about many will come with Jesus' name. And they will deceive many, Antichrist. So Matthew chapter 24 is just introduction. We can see them, but it's now just beginning. But the, uh, the, the real one, will happen in seven years tribulation. Next one, we remember that war against 
that there is a nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, right? Many wars, rumors of wars, you will hear. And then black horse means, that means. Lamentation chapter 5, our skin was black because of terrible famine. The black is the color of famine. And the last one, pale horse means pestilences. Chapter 6, verse, nine, verse 8. Pale horse named, him, named of him who sat on his death, and Hades followed he, with him. And power was given to them. Hades means that the place that people go in the Bible. Over the force of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. At the time, I think that people didn't understand that why people were dead. Beast of the earth. We can understand hunger and thought, but why? Beast of the earth. Beast became very strong? No. In our time, we can understand. Because the fatal disease normally comes from animals. Right? Worst epidemic in recent history, they're all from birds or animals. So the bird flu is also from animal, and the coronavirus. We believe that this virus originated in bats from animals. And also, uh, what corona pandemic brings is really similar to what happened in seven year tribulation. We understand that there will be contextless society and strong government, the citizen will demand strong government, implant chip in body. This is being realized. For example, uh, we can easily see the kind of uh, notice board in, in the shop, right? We are temporarily posing the acceptance of cash. cash. So more and more shops, they only accept contactless paying. Right? We have cashless store, and TFL also, they have um, advertisements to uh, encourage people to uh, contactless, safest way to pay. But you know, Revelation chapter 13, can you find this verse? Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13, 16 to 17. He calls his all, he means Antichrist, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, which means every single person, no exception, to receive a mark on their right hand, on their forehead. Why they get receive mark on their right hand or their forehead is to buy or sell. 17. No one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So in the Bible, it's written that in seven years tribulation, People will go cashless society, right? Buy and sell by receiving the mark on their right hand or their forehead. But please notice that book of Revelation written in 2,000 years ago. Can you imagine that a person who lived 2,000 years ago, Jesus' time, they can imagine that in the future, 2,000 years, years time, people will buy or sell with the mark their right hand and forehead, who can write this Bible like that? God taught John to write down it. In our time, really interesting, I believe that you uh, read this uh, article before. So this is uh, the news written in last, last month. Will I need a vaccine passport? Have you, uh, the, did you uh, heard that, hear that the vaccine passport to go to the pub or travel abroad? Here, the Boris Johnson said, uh, pop goers and visitors to other venues may need to prove they've been vaccinated against coronavirus, Prime Minister Boris Johnson said. Which means, people who haven't vaccinated, they cannot go pop or go abroad. It's really similar that without mark, you cannot buy, you cannot sell. It's now being realized. Um, I'm not. I'm not telling that uh, this uh, vaccine vaccine is a Marco beast. It's not. I, I doesn't mean that. Anyway, it's very similar. 
we are very close to this society. And also, they will demand strong... Uh, so, one more thing. The Bible said that we will receive the mark, our right hand and forehead. Is now we can see in our time. Right hand, right? I got the idea when I was in line at the supermarket and I saw that uh, to pay is a quite complex and uh, process that takes a lot of time. So I thought that uh, there must be an easier way to pay and, uh, and a quicker way to pay. And that was the start of Quickster. When you're going to pay in a supermarket, you enter your uh, four last digits in your phone number and then you hold your hand above the sensor. And the transaction takes less than five seconds. So it's a very quick payment solution. I think it's really good. Um, it's easy when I, when I don't have my wallet with me. I can use my hand. So it's really fast and easy. And did you know that the cashless world is in London? Shopping on Amazon has always looked like this. Or like this. But now, for the first time in the UK, it looks like this. A cashierless experience where you just pick up what you want, walk out the store, and your Amazon account is charged automatically. For the first time outside the US, a physical Amazon Fresh store has opened up. And it's in Ealing, in West London. You can, you can digit there if you want. In this society, the people cannot buy anything without receiving this mark. This society surely will come. And also, uh, in Financial Times, uh, I read an article that uh, titled The World After Coronavirus is um, Today, for the first time in human history, technology makes it possible to monitor everyone all the time. O only 50 years ago, the KGB couldn't follow the 240 million Soviet citizens 24 hours a day, nor could the KGB hope effectively process all the information gathered. But it's possible in our time. In the battle against the coronavirus epidemic, several governments have already deployed the new surveillance tools. The most notable case in China, they, uh, Chinese authorities uh, cannot only quick and identify suspected coronavirus virus carriers, but also track their movement and identify anyone they came into contact with. A range move app, movement app warns citizens about their proximity in infected patients. And it now changes. Uh, it signifies a dramatic transition from over the skin to under the skin. When your finger touched the screen of a smartphone and clicked a link, the government wanted to know exactly Sorry. Finger was clicking on, but with coronavirus, the focus of interest shift to where? Now the government wants to know the temperature of your finger and the blood, blood pressure under its skin. So surveillance technology is developing at breakneck speed. Mm. And here, uh, as thought experiment of considering hypothetical uh, future government will demand that every citizen, citizen wears a biometric bracelet that monitors body temperature and heart rate 24 hours a day. The resulting data is hoarded, the analyzed by government algorithm. That algorithm will know that you are sick even before you know it. And they will also know where you have been, who you have met. The chains of infection could be drastically shortened and even cut together. Altogether, such a system could um, arguably stop the epidemic in its tracks within days. Sounds wonderful, right? The people will demand. We can imagine that this corona pandemic lasts longer and longer and longer, and people will be very tired. They will demand themselves. So as we read, Revelation chapter 13 said the he, the beast, which means the, uh, the Antichrist, uh, he was given authority to continue, to continue for 42 months. His first half of seven-year tribulation. And then uh, an authority was given 
him over every tribe, every tongue, and every nation. 2,000 years ago, how can a person imagine that one, only one can control and monitor all the people of the world? But in our time, we can easily understand it is possible in our time. AI technology or the tracking technology, we have all of that. But I was so amazed that when I see, I, I believe that you already got the, the Google timeline from Google. The last year, uh, November, I went to Dortmund in Germany to give a seminar. I'm amazed that he knows me better than me. Right? Here it says, um, exact distance I traveled, exact time I spent. Two hours, 15 minutes, I um, the ride, ride, ride the car, rode the car. And 0.9 miles, I walked in 13 minutes. I didn't even know that. But after that, I sub, um, the safely arrived at Dortmund and gave the Bible seminar. And then I came, came back. He also shows me the, the, the number. And then at that time, I need to be quarantined 14 days. So I kept government guideline. 9, you can see, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23rd, I came out. This is my route, Sainsbury, HMAT. But, you know, interesting thing is, what if I go out within the quarantine? They knew it. Right? So, if I break the law, and they immediately can know it, I was so scared because of that. And what if I left my smartphone in my home and I go out? And in this time, they couldn't know that, right? So because of that, a government will, de uh, the, how shall we do that? They will demand this chip, try to make this chip in our body. And then everything will be solved. So the, uh, the British, British ladies, they talked about, yeah, right, it's of course, being monitored is not very comfortable, but it's better than being infected. They were told, they, they're talking about this matter, right? I think that fear outweighs the ne negatives being tracked for lots of people. And also, it's now uh, studied that the chip implants our body. Injecting this sensor under your skin could prevent future pandemics. One of the scariest parts of the coronavirus is its dormant period. Dormant period means that you've got virus but have no symptom. An infected person could be walking around for the spreading the disease for up to two weeks before they even show any symptoms they are sick. That's why this is being studied. So military funded biosensor could be a future pandemic detection. Now they are waiting FDA approval next year. The Bible said to receive mark on their right hand, on their forehead. No one may buy or sell except one who has the mark. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. Is the number of a man. Number is six, six, six. As same as the barcode we are now using now. Typical six shaped like this. Exactly the same. We use. So the Bible prophesies 666. The person who developed this uh, technology, uh, he is not based on the Bible. Interestingly, is now being utilized in our time. So we are living in very, very unique society. This will happen in um, seven years tribulation. So let's see the um, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 to 14. The last verse of the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12, chapter 12 verse 13 to 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. 
So we heard all the conclusion. In NIV version, now all has been heard. And this we have to do. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is man's all. 14. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So, like this verse, from the first day up until now, we've learned why the Bible is the Word of God. So, now all has been heard. We knew all the human history briefly, but we know what will happen and what happened in the beginning of the human history. But, even if you know well about the Bible, if you cannot receive salvation, it's no use. So it's a great blessing that God has given us this opportunity to learn the Bible in the last days of human history. Really, really blessing. So it's very clear that why we are learning the Bible this week is that order to, in order to be born again and to get salvation according to the Bible. So from now on, let me tell you why should I be saved? Now, from now on, which belong to the heavenly things. We learned all three things up to now. And then the most important thing for us is heavenly things. How I can get salvation? And why I have to get salvation? How can I go to heaven? Our first Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. From here, it's more important. First Timothy chapter two verse four. Simple, not a very short verse. Shall we read it together? Uh, Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? The first word "who" means that the uh, the the uh, former verse is uh, the God our Savior, which means God our Savior desires all men to be saved. This is the heart of God. God desires us to be saved indeed. So I thought that, like this verse, if everyone can be saved like God's desire, God wants everyone to be saved. So according to this verse, everyone can be saved. And is it easy or difficult to be saved? What do you think? God made the way of salvation, right? Of course. And then if God really wants wants to everyone to be saved, then God should be uh, should be give uh, the way of salvation very very easy. So, for example, uh, anyone can pass the ex uh, entrance exam to Oxford and Cambridge, and then the exam should be very very easy, so that anyone can pass. Right? So, uh, whether the when old people or the primary school, some illiterate, they can they have to get salvation. So. God made this way very easy. So those who do not put themselves, because this way is so easy and simple, so those who do not put themselves down, they cannot be saved. Then how humble, how humble should we be? As much as great sinner, great sinner who is going to hell. And then uh, the fact that the way of salvation is easy, which means that we ourselves are responsible because we cannot make excuses before God because God has prepared all the measures right? God prepared all the measures because God wants to every man to be saved but the problem is the, the people who need to be saved they don't want it right? so no matter how the, the entrance exam is easy but people, they want to go to the, that university, then it's no use. So, therefore, if you are not saved, then you're responsible for that. The Bible said that uh, God made that way very easy, and only thing we can do is seek, honestly. Jeremiah 29, verse 13, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. God saves those who really want to be saved with all hearts. Even I, I, I cannot understand that who is uh, seeking honest heart or not, but God knows. After the Bible seminar finished, interestingly, very amazingly, 
people, the people who were saved, who really speaking, honestly. So God's never deceived. Exactly saves those who seek salvation. Matthew chapter 7, 7 and 8, Jesus said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. So for everyone who seeks, receives means that why haven't you been saved yet? It's because they've never desperate, desperately asked yet. And never been asking with a truly honest heart. And then, why? What's the reason they don't have a desperate heart before God? Because they don't know why, do, why they have to get salvation. For example, if it is 100% that I've got cancer, very fatal cancer, if it is sure, I'm, I'm sure about that, then of course I will get big surgery. But if I didn't know that, if I didn't recognize that, then why I have to get that big surgery? I have no desperate hearts. So, because you don't know why you need to be saved, that's why you don't have a desperate heart. So when we recognize that we are sinner, I'm really going to hell, this is fact. And then, of course, you will seek. And or surely I say to you, unless you are converted, converted means change your direction. It's not saying that uh, live your own way every day and then Sunday go to church and hello God and go your way. It's not a convert. Change your direction. Why change your direction? Recognize that this way I'm going to is connect to hell. If I live this way continuously, definitely I go to hell. And then they surely will convert. And as become a little children, the benefit of children the, is uh, they are very uh, pure and they receive. And they easy, easily believe what they've told. Right? But adults, they are somewhat, they, uh, they uh, stick to their idea. Right? Uh, so you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So, yeah, so coming to God with a complete change of direction. In Psalm chapter 34, the Lord is near to those. It's very important, right? Because God is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as uh, have a contrite spirit and have a crushed in spirit. Why do you have a broken heart and contrite spirit? Because if you believe that God exists and then the Bible is true and really there are heaven and hell and then realize that you are a sinner and the fact that I'm going to hell and then because of that, I have broken heart. Very naturally, that kind of heart will arise within you. I don't have to, uh, you have to have desperate, desperate heart, you have to have a broken heart. I don't have to do that. If they, while they're listening to the Bible seminar, while they're learning about the Bible and God and heavenly things, then that kind of heart will arise very naturally. And also, uh, we need to, uh, to think deeply about the term salvation itself. Yeah. The word salvation, this, this word, I think we need to know the real meaning of this straight. But many people, they misunderstood this word salvation. Because some people, they think that receiving salvation is a reaching a high level by working, uh, better, working very hard in church life. I need to get there very hard, very long time. But it's not, nothing to do with the salvation. Being saved is nothing to do with my work and good deeds. If, if I can get salvation by good deeds or my work, then it, took many, it, it will take a very long time. Right? And if people who are very weak, they cannot do it. God said, it's very easy. I think this picture can show us the meaning of salvation very well. So uh, there are two people in this picture. Um, 
So being drowned in the middle of the sea, she is now being drowned in the middle of the sea, there seems no way to get out by her staff. That person needs salvation. He doesn't need the salvation, right? We need to know that we are in this situation. The Bible said that all men to be saved does mean that we are all the same situation as states to be saved. We are all in danger, even though you didn't know that. We are all in danger in being drowned in deep sea. Deep sin, you can say. So, if you are delivered, if you are delivered with the help of rescue team, you can say that, oh, you get salvation. Right? But, if you swim with all your own strength and come out, we don't say that salvation. Right? So, that's why the reason God all men to be saved is talking about my state that need to be saved. Because it's the fact that I'm a sinner, and if I die now, then I have to see God with my sin, and I go to hell. Because Jesus said, Luke chapter 5, Jesus answered and said to them, Those who are well have no need of physician. True. But those who are sick, I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. So from this verse, who can meet Jesus in person? Yeah, those who knew they are sick, which means sinners. Those who they regard themselves, oh, I'm okay, I'm well, I'm not sinner, I'm righteous. They couldn't meet Jesus. Jesus come to call sinners to repentance. So Jesus clearly said that you must realize that we are sinners. Also, we, know, we need to know that uh, there's nothing I can do. So she needs to know that nothing I can do now. If, if he delivers me, then I can alive and be alive. Then if he give up me, then I will die. Right? So even though you've been to church for a long time, praying hard, doing service and offering, whatever you do, he cannot bring you out of hell. Because if someone says that, oh, I go to heaven because I can do something on my side. Those people have no idea of salvation. They are the people who don't know the meaning of salvation. The salvation is not on my side. So we need to know I cannot do anything the, uh, about the going to heaven. So uh, whether being saved or not depends on the ability of third party. So therefore, to be saved, um, summarized, so first of all, we need to know, if I die now, I'll, I definitely go hell. That should be known. And second thing, there's nothing I can do to get out of hell. Some people, they, after they listen to the Bible, say, oh, I need to do more things in the church to go, go to heaven. They misunderstood, right? Nothing you can do regard, regarding heaven. Because I'm a sinner, and then and the sin will never uh, disappear if I commit. So it's important to be sure that we are sinners. And um, if she really uh, gets saved uh, with the help of this uh, person, and then uh, she might uh, clearly remember about this point, right? Yeah. She can tell, she can testify about his te her testimony. I was once drowned in the sea, but how and when I was rescued from the sea, right? So he can clearly will de deliver. So even if you are rescued from the sea, there's something to say, right? Then how much more can you say once you get salvation from hell? Delivered from the sea, delivered from the hell, which is more greater? Of course, hell. Someone who delivered by, from the sea, they have many things to tell, something to tell to people very clearly. Then how much more saved the person? Sometimes I ask that, oh, how you were saved? Then can I say that? Oh, I, do, I, I don't know exactly, which means maybe not saved the person. So 
A person who is born again knows clearly how and when they were born again, and also they can clearly know and tell what changes have happened to them. You know, the gas salvation and being born again that makes people changed. So it's once in a lifetime experience. So throughout human history, so many people they have that experience. So Colossians chapter one said, "Since the day, here mentioned the day, right? The day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. From this time, you bringing forth fruits." And Philippians chapter one, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you, all with joy, for your fellowship in gospel, from the first day until now. When is the first day to Philippian members? The first day they come to the church? No. The day they receive salvation. The day they realize the remission of their sins. Very famous hymn, right? Happy day that fixed my choice. Happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Is this song? <laughs> happy day. Which day? Jesus washed my sins away. This book titled "How They Were Born Again." Martin Luther, John Calvin, uh, John Bunyan, Jim Jandorf, John Wesley, Charles Finney, Hudson Taylor, Charles Spurgeon, D.L. Moody. Uchimura Kanjo. Martin Luther is a reformer of Christianity in German. He saved 1513, he received salvation. But interesting thing is that he got salvation, he got salvation after he became priest. Even he received a doctorate in theology. So Christianity Today, the website, have a, a good story about him. He Receive salvation through the verse Romans chapter one eleven uh, seventeen, and the righteous shall live by faith. He gets he got salvation while he lecturing people with the Bible, right? Which means that uh, we can become a a, a theological professor even we are not saved. Right? So. Uh, doctorate in the Bible became a professor at Wittenberg University during a lecture on the Psalm. While he lectured on Psalm, studied a book of Romans, and he saved. He began to understand that the righteousness of God is that through which the righteous live by the gift of God, namely by faith. Faith comes very quickly, and it costs no money. It cost any no work. Peter felt that as if I were entirely born again and had in, entered the paradise itself through the gates of that had been flung open. Blaise Pascal, 1654, received salvation. 23rd November in this year, Blaise Pascal. Uh, then on this day, Pascal experienced a definite conversion during a vision of crucifixion. He even mentioned the point of the time from about half past ten in the evening until about half past twelve. He clearly remembered it. Uh, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, not only prosperous and servants, certitude, certitude, feeling joy, peace. Yes, cert is uh, um, the uh, certainty, sure um, assurance came by God. John Wesley, a British pastor, received salvation uh, 1738, May 24th. He, even nearly 20 years ago, he enrolled College of Theology in Oxford. Even he went to America as a missionary, but at the time he wasn't saved. John Wesley, he said about a quarter before nine, he mentioned also the time. Uh, this is a uh, salvation history of him. In late 1735, a ship made its way to the New World from England. On board was a young Anglican minister, John Wesley, who had been 
invited to serve a powerful British colonist, Savannah, Georgia, in the US. When the weather went, the weather went sour, the ship found itself in serious trouble. Wesley was the chaplain of the vessel, pastor, feared for his life. But he noticed that a, germ, a group of German Moravian saved, saved, group, saved group, who were on their way to push American Indians, were not afraid at all. In fact, throughout the storm, they sang calmly. When the trip ended, he asked the Moravian leader about his serenity. And the, the Moravian responded with a question, Did he, Wesley, have your faith in Christ? The leader asked the pastor. Wesley said he did, of course. But later he reflected, I fear they were vain words. In fact, Wesley was confused by the experience, but his perplexity was the lead to a period of soul searching, and finally he gets a vision. On May 24, 1738, he had an experience that changed everything. He described the event in his journal. In the evening, I went unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street. Maybe in London. So I think some of you might invite it unwillingly to this. But if God's grace uh, worked in you, then you, you will get salvation. Uh, where one was reading Luther's prefaced uh, epistle to the Rome, Romans about a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change uh, which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strange, uh, strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ and he gets salvation. So he said that Christ alone for my salvation and assurance was given me. He said that I, I'm assured, he didn't say that. Assurance was given me, right? which is given by God. He had uh, taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. While he learned, while he learning, the Bible, the Cup Romans, John Wesley. William Carey also saved 10 February 1779, saved by the verse Hebrew chapter 13, verse 13. And Charles Spurgeon saved 1850, January 6, received salvation. Conversion of Charles Spurgeon, uh, this is a short story of him. He said that there is no topic of greater significance than conversion. Conversion means get, getting salvation. The great mass of human beings, so many people living in this world, can be divided into two groups, only two groups. The converted and the unconverted. Alas, we must say that most are unconverted. This question, are you converted, is often asked in sermon. There is no more important and honest question than I'm converted or unconverted? So I'd like to question you, that are you converted? Most serious question in our life. So how can we get salvation? You search the scriptures, for in them, you think you have eternal life. Why are we learning scriptures as, just as um, John Wesley, William Carey, and many people in history, they get salvation while they're learning Scriptures. Diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess you possess eternal life. Having been born again, not of the corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God. We can get salvation through the word of God. Some people claim that ah I'm saved, but how can you save? They don't know about the Bible. It's fake. So we can get salvation through the word of God because our faith based on the Bible. Only the Bible is true. Of its own, we will brought us forth by the word of truth. How can we be brought forth by the word of truth? He chose to give us birth through the word of truth. Same verse. And Isaiah chapter 8, to the law, to the testimony. We have to follow, the law means the Bible, our salvation should, should be based on the Bible and testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. So, uh, below is not salvation. Many people, they misunderstood about the salvation. They, some people, they said that intellectual agreement on doctrines. Did you know that 
uh, the um, Bible teachers, they killed Jesus 2,000 years ago. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, none of the rulers of this age understood it. They didn't know that. Jesus came as Messiah. So they seem to know the Bible, but they didn't know anything because their heart is wrong, was wrong. And some people, they misunderstood that uh, they were registered at church. Oh, I've got baptisms. But did you know that a person, there is a person baptized, but go to hell in Acts chapter 8. Conversely, a person who never get baptism, but he went to heaven, which appears in Luke chapter 23, a criminal next to Jesus. And speak tongue, healing from illness, experiencing miracle is not the salvation. So, one who experienced the miracle the most in the Bible is King Pharaoh, Old Testament. Even his first son was passed away because of God's hand. He realized directly, firsthand, but he didn't believe. And also Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, he saw every miracle uh, next to Jesus, but he, he didn't believe as well. So miracle is good. We can understand and believe God alive. God is alive, but it's not. It doesn't mean that uh, you get you get God's salvation. And saying illusion, hear voices, is nothing to do with salvation. And positions uh, and service and in the church also uh, have nothing to do with the salvation, because Matthew chapter seven, twenty two and twenty three. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name? We have done many wonders in your name. They've got many works. But, and then I will declare to them, she just declared to them, I never knew you. Depart from me who practice loneliness. So they, they have good works. They have many, many good works and sacrifice, but uh, their faith is not based on the Bible. And some tears in the church is also uh, not salvation. So William Booth, he uh, predicted uh, the future Christianity will religion without Holy Spirit, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, heaven without hell. In our time, many churches only speaking about religion, Christianity, forgiveness, salvation, and heaven. But they do not tell about hell, regeneration, repentance, and judgment, and sin. Before we get salvation, we need to know that we are sinners. That's an important thing. So it must be clear that I'm a sinner before believing God. So, if I die today, I go to hell. This should come first. And then realizing that there is nothing I can do to get out of hell. So realizing that you are a sinner is most important. So uh, the second part of this sermon will be about what is the definition of sinner according to the Bible. That will be very important, right? So after a uh, five minute break, a uh, ten minute break, we will uh, meet together is sinner. Psalm chapter 51, verse 5. Let me read in NIV version. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. New King's Version, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Yes. According to the Bible, fourthly, it says that uh, those who were born as a sinner, rather than just committing a sin, of course you're a sinner, but uh, on top of, top of that, uh, the Bible testifies our state, or our stature of, uh, as a sinner. So, uh, Psalm chapter 51, written by righteous man, King David, he was a saved person, but he said that he was 
sinful at first, from the beginning. The point that uh, his mom conceived him, and that point he was sinners. And Psalm chapter 58 also said, Even from birth, the wicked go astray. From the womb, they are wayward and speak lies. Same verse, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born, speaking lies. Maybe moms who are raising kids, they may understand this word. As soon as they are born, they are speaking lies. They go astray. They are full of sins. They are not angels. So, man is a sinner from the moment they were in mother's womb. They come out to the world, born into the world with sinful nature. They look like very good, but they have sinful nature in their inner parts. So you know the tiger, or tiger is uh, a tiger when when they were born right? from the beginning, and the tiger grows up. The nature of a tiger revealed. So when they were treated very well, and their temper or, or their characteristic is revealed, not no, no, hidden, but uh, when when it comes out, when someone get on their nerve, right? it comes out. So. Likewise, we, uh, we were given our father's surname. And also the fish, they swim very well, uh, we, uh, as, as if they have um, innate nature, innate, innate ability. The skill of swimming, they get this from their birth. So falsely, the Bible said that the definition of the sinner is that we born as a sinner from descendant of Adam. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus uh, told us that uh, a tree, so in terms of tree, so every good tree bears good fruit. Of course, a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into the fire. 20. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So, which means uh, we are like trees. For example, how so when we examine that our word, our behavior, our idea, our thought, which comes out from us, uh, by do, by seeing them, uh, we know that we are sinners. So committing sin, speaking bad word, and uh, not very good deeds is very natural for us. For example, a seed was planted, grown up, become tree, but still we do not which tree it is, after we see the fruits, uh, we can recognize that it's apple tree. Okay? Why this shape and why these fruits were born? Because it's apple seed. So seed determines everything. Likewise, um, we are like a seed of sin. So that's why we were sinner and we commit so many sins in our life. So why do I commit sin? Because I'm a sinner. We can ask fish, how do you swim so well? Because I'm fish. Innate skill. So we can see that desire for sin is coming out very naturally at all time. So for example, the thorn tree bears only thorns. No matter how we give much fertilized they only bears thorns. The bad tree bears bad fruits. We can say, some people might say that oh, religious people, they are very righteous and oh, they are very weak, murderer, con artist. But in God's eye, only the matter of the amount of uh, fruits. So bear abundantly, bear few. They are more or less, they are all the same state. In God's eye, God's point of view, wicked person, ordinary person, religious person, they are all have sinful nature. They were all sin, uh, they were born as a sinner. So, uh, firstly, the definition of a sinner is that we came from father, father came from grandfather, can go over time in the past, and then 
we all descendant from Adam. So Romans chapter 5, 12 said that, Therefore, just as through one man, which means Adam, sin entered the world, and that through sin, thus that spread all men, because all sinned. So we are all descendants of Adam, because Adam sinned, the sin, as the seed of sin, uh, came to our uh, spirit. So uh, we all originated from Adam, and Adam's disobedience resulted in sinful mankind. And sin separates from Adam, Adam from the life of God, like life in darkness. Likewise, having been disconnected from the life of God. Since you were born as a sinner, so we were born as a sinner, so as we're getting older, our sins getting bigger and heavier. So even babies, they have sinful nature. We can see many examples. For example, like this uh, video. Uh, she might be told, she might be told from her parents that oh, you have to take care of your younger brother, right? And then let's see how she did it. Scary. Was she told that you have to slack your younger brother? No, she never told. She, she was never told that. But she was very envious always when there were no parents around them and she, her simple nature comes out. This is human being. And the definition of sinner is we, the one who have nature of sin. So in the Bible, said Proverbs chapter 6, the six things of the Lord hates, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are shaped in running to evil. So our eye, our tongue, hands, heart, feet, this is like a um, device that we can we, 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 we normally use when we commit sin. Among them, our heart is the, our heart is the most, uh, the problem, biggest problem. For, uh, for from within, out of man's heart, Jesus pointed out heart. So the people, they only regarded them action or behavior as sin. But in God's sight, God said, something out of our heart, for example, evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, Deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, folly, 13 things, all these things, evils come from inside and make the man unclean. So it's a fact that we have this kind of evil nature. Is it true or not? We have all these kind of things in our hearts. If you haven't recognized it, and then maybe the condition is very good. And uh, the Jeremiah chapter 17 said, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Even I do not know it. My heart is the most deceitful thing. But I, the Lord God, search the heart. So we can have many, build many relationships between people because we cannot know what they are thinking about. Right? But God search the heart. I test the mind. So, um, even though I know, don't know exactly, but Bible said, God sees my heart. When he speaks kindly, do not believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. The Bible, the number seven, means perfection, which means our heart is completely corrupted. For example, um, uh, like these seven abominable things, Arrogance, proud heart in our in our mind, and stubbornness, rudeness, greed, laziness, coveting, opportunism, selfish, hatred, anger, lie, deceit, slander, noisiness. All we have this in our hearts. This is a fact. But if 
we cannot control this kind of nature and we face a lot of problem in uh, human relationship. That's why we try to wrap, right? We wrap and cover with education, status, appearance, religion, good deeds, humble, but that does not mean that I have no sin. Only wrapping. So we call a person who wrapped this very well, uh, or a man with a very good characteristic. So even a good characteristic person, he also has many sins. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2, All the ways of man are pure in his own eyes. So normally people, they regard themselves as a pretty good person. Because they, own, they have their own standard. Why is that sin? Right? They have own their, their standard. But the Lord weighs the spirits. We will be judged according to not our standard, but God's standard, which is the Bible. God looks at the heart. Our conscience let us know that. Samuel chapter 16, 7. Lord does not see as man sees, but man looks at the outward appearance. We look outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So God has a different eye from us. For example, which of two cups uh, would you like to drink coffee? From the outside, maybe many of you will choose the right one. But looking inside, you may as well change your mind. So God looks man like this. Inside. So God sees man in this way. So God looks at the heart, our appearance, we always pray, offering, service in the church, pray, zeal towards God, but his heart is spirit is dead, which means corrupted heart. But why? Why people cannot understand their sinner very well? Because affirmation. People judge themselves according to their own standards. They have incorrect definition of sin. For example, a person is complaining at the station um, after five minutes left the train. And he complained that, um, with my watch, I came on time, but he, he got wrong watch. It's no use complaining like that. So it's no use that you're complaining that in my opinion, in my standard, it's not sin. Why abortion is sin? Why adultery is sin? It's your idea. Right? So different countries have different laws in our time as well. So did you know that uh, some countries, they cut arms off, the fifth arm, right? if they, when they steal something. But in the UK, we have different rules. So we will, judge, we will, will be judged uh, by God's law when we die. So the sin, the original language sin means in, uh, in Greek word, which means the, uh, you couldn't reach the standard. So it's the same whether you slightly away or greatly away, it's the same. You couldn't meet the target. So in, in our time, the problem is people change, their, their, uh, change the definition of sin. Why is sin? It's not a sin. So people set their own standard and consider themselves righteous. But we need to know what's the sin in God's standard. This is, this is important, base, base of the Bible. In, in God's, in God's uh, eye, a sin in heart, thought, imagination. In human society, even though we uh, have a bad plot, it is not sin. Right? Bad thinking. Imagination, we, we, we won't punish it. But God's side, it is sin. We read verses, right? Everything comes from our heart, it is sin. And don't when told not to. For example, you shall not covet, Exodus 20. You shall not give false testimony. And you shall not steal. So if we covet, if we uh, give some false testimony, tell a lie, and steal something, from parents or anything, pick up from the street, or we covet anything. Uh, and who can say that I've never 
tell a lie in my life. Who can say that? That person, one more sin added. Tell a lie. So, no one can keep uh, this word every day. And did not when told to do. I think this is more, more difficult because there is no limit. For example, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. For example, if a beggar passes by you, then we have to take off my, all the clothes to them, him, because he is my body. So, how can a person, how can a human being can do that? So this means we have to know that we couldn't keep, we cannot keep, uh, and uh, we cannot reach the God's standard. God really uh, wants us to know we all sinners. And humble yourselves means if, if I become pride, arrogant, I will sin. Honor your father and mother. If we, we do not this every time, then we break the sin, break the law. And James chapter 4, 17, Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not to do it, to him it is sin. We know many things to do. It is right. I have to do this. But did you do every every time? No. We're always breaking the law of God. So in my life, even if knowing that this is the right thing, but we didn't do it many times. Even good deeds, of course we sometimes do good deeds, but sometimes it's covered by sin. Not very pure uh, motive. Or a selfish uh, the, the reason we sometimes do it. So Isaiah chapter 6, 4, verse 6. We are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy legs. He did good deeds, but motives are not pure. Sometimes selfish motives. It's true that it's close, but dirty close. Not, give, uh, not received by God. And we cannot hide my sin with my deeds. Isaiah 59, their webs will not become garments, nor will they, they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. So in order to cover up their sins, they cover them with good deeds, but this cannot hide their sins. The Bible said. And um, un unintentional sin done without noticing, so rebel, uh, Leviticus chapter 5, uh, though he does not know it, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity. Sometimes we don't notice that even what we sinned. So during our lifetime, we commit many sins unintentionally. So I did naturally, but it could harm other people. Right? Yeah. So, um, therefore, uh, the sins in God's standard listed as follows. Sin in heart, thought, imagination, thought went told not to, did not went told to do, even good deeds covered by sin, can I hide my sin with my deeds and unintentional sins. So this is God's declaration. Job chapter 15, what is man that he could be pure? And who is born of a woman and he could be righteous? God puts to no trust in his saints, and the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less man, who is abominable and filthy, who drinks in wickedity like water. God does not make issue with our behavior or our sin. Rather, he makes issue of man, right? So, in Old Testament, uh, a man with leprosy, a man with leper, the man himself is unclean. Everything he's stepping on, everything he touched are unclean as well. So as a born-again people, apart from the God, everything he, he does is in from God's eye is sin. So uh, from head to toe, we all sin. So God didn't recognize us um, uh, as a clean even a single time, a single day, or a moment. And Job chapter 25, 
How then can man be righteous before God? It is impossible. No man could be righteous before God. If even the moon does not shine, the stars are not pure in his sight. Because God and us, we have different eyes. So God has a different eye from us. For example, uh, God has an eye, even he sees the same, even the light is uh, turned off, it's the same. For example, um, here said that uh, how much less a man who is a maggot and some of a man who is a womb. So maggot and womb, they could they compare with themselves, right? Are you a good maggot, a bad maggot? But in our eye, all maggot. Right? Likewise, we can compare, oh, you're a good man, you're a bad man. But in front of God's eye, we all sinners. The Bible says that. So, this is the Bible declaration. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. This is God's conclusion. Romans chapter 10, verse 10, uh, sorry, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. Uh, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. So many times emphasized. There is none righteous, no, not one, in a view of God. For example, let us compare with the people uh, who are nicer than me. So, do you think that is there a person who is nicer than me in this world? Of course, if we put someone in front of me who are nicer than me, we can put many people in the UK. We can put more people if we compare in this world. And in from Adam to now, we can put more and more people, numerous people you can put before than me. Right? But God does not consider them as righteous and judge them according to their work. And then some people, they misunderstood that God will not judge me. It is a totally misunderstanding because God punishes um, people who are way more nicer than me, right? according to their deeds, but um, it's totally misunderstanding that, but misunderstanding that I won't be judged that I can avoid hell. So the Lord knows the thought of man, they are fertile. And the one more way God uh, teaches us that we are sinners is Ten Commandments. I believe you've heard about Ten Commandments. Moses received this commandment from Mount Sinai. Uh, Ten Commandments um, is written in uh, Exodus chapter 20. But we know that uh, the, the, reason, the reason, for, uh, reason for giving uh, the Ten Commandments, why God gave this to us. These Ten Commandments, if we unfolding, unfold these Ten Commandments, it becomes a whole Bible. So, some people, they, want, uh, they try to go to heaven by keeping these Ten Commandments. It's um, out of uh, sense because to keep the Ten Commandments is the same as to keep the entire Bible. Because Ten Commandments is summary of a full Bible. And to keep the Ten Commandments, which means you can live like God. Who can uh, live like God? We all born as a sinner and with a sinful nature. So anyone who tries to keep the Ten Commandments, they will realize soon they cannot keep them. So then why then why God gave us this Ten Commandments to us? Because to realize us, for us to realize, we cannot keep them. We have no option, we have no chance but getting salvation. So make sure that I am going to hell. Make more sure of that I'm going to hell. So I need you. Only way you can save me. 
Roman chapter 3, the same chapter, verse 19. Verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world, world may become guilty before God. Verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So in every version, there's a uh, conscious of sin. So, for example, do not covet, do not lie, lie, do not steal. So when we were told Ten Commandments, then our mouth is stopped. That I'm no sin. That's the purpose. I realize that I have no, no choice but I have to be judged by God. I will be judged by God. So verse 20 said that by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. So like the Bible said, throughout history, so many people born and die, but among them, no one has entered into heaven by observing the law. There's no one. So if God told us, hey, come to come to heaven by keeping the law and Ten Commandments, then we have to all give up. There's no possibility. So, like verse 20, 20 said that for by the law, for by the Ten Commandments is the knowledge of sin. And are we conscious of sin? Aware of sin? Ah, I'm a sinner. It's like a mirror, right? When we see mirror, we have something um, clean on our face, how can we know that? By looking mirror, right? Yeah. So, James chapter 2, whoever shall keep the whole law, yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. This is God's standard. We, go, we, uh, we are judged in the, in the court, in trial, in this world as well. If we just break one law in this country, and we, we will be accused. Ten Commandments, Let's make an example like this. Um, the how many rings break for this person fell down? At least one. Right? One, two, or ten is the same. So it shows us the standard of God, and then we all break God's law. It's broken. And by the Bible, we can see our sin and like mirror. After we read the Bible and Ten Commandments, we are aware of we are sinners. So to make you realize that you cannot keep the law, and to realize that there is only one way to go to heaven is getting salvation. So keeping the law is impossible for us. So if you want to go to, to, want to, go to heaven by keeping the law, and then you, can, you have to keep this level. Galatians, the next, next, uh, the, the book. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. For as many as are the work of the law are under the cause. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the Bible, in the book of the law to do, to do them. So if they want to keep the law, and then they have to, um, uh, verse 10, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things. They have to continue in all things which are written in the book of law. So, the Bible said that the first sentence of verse 10 is that, as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. This is the difference between the Bible and all religions in the world. So those who try to go to heaven by keeping the law are under the curse, which means you are going to hell. But all religions in the world, they encourage us to doing good things, right? You have to do this, you do that, good deed, and you can go to good place. All the religions in this world is same course. But the Bible says oppositely. If you keep the, keep the law to go to heaven, you are under the curse. So that's, that's alternative way to go to heaven is verse 11. This is the way God gave us. 11. 
but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of the God is evident, right? Anyone can, no one can go to heaven by and be justified by the law. For the just shall live by faith. So here, answer is faith. Verse 10, the works of the law. Verse 11, faith. They are opposite words. Right? So, it is impossible to be justified by good deeds. So, um, when we live with this um, sinful nature, committing many sins, and uh, this is the reason why I must receive salvation. This is my identity. I was born as a sinner, not righteous. And this is my destiny. I cannot avoid death. Everyone, they are going to die. And this is my condition. I am facing the judgment. Those who are born as sinners, they spend their lives sinning with their heart, thought, words, actions. Our whole life stained sin. Life is continuation of committing sins, we could say. And then, while we're committing sin, the death came to us suddenly. The only obvious fact that the man cannot escape, people will die. Therefore, you will certainly die. Death is closer to us than we think. Hebrews chapter 9, 27. Let's read it together. As it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, the judgment. So did you know that death is very closer to us? Even Corona time, we know. So let me show you a show, um, video clip. There are many accidents around us. He's uh, peacefully walking the street. He never knew that what happened in just five seconds time. Suddenly, car accidents. In was. If everything ends with death, and then it's not very big problem. Right? If we die, everything ends, what is the problem? Not big problem. But the problem is that death is not the end, but another beginning. The Bible said, after this, not end, but judgment. So, if they, some people, they encounter many accidents in their life, if they knew this would happen to them, and then they would have thought of death and life. What is death and what is life? They would have thought if they knew it. And people think, even though they see many, many death cases, but I won't die. People think that. So, just as death is true, and it's also true that there is judgment behind death, the Bible said. And then how to solve sin problem? Why we will be judged? Because of our sin. So, what matters the most in my life? Salvation of my soul. The matters most. But confession does not bring forgiveness. If sin is forgiven by confessing, it's very great. And commit very big sin and just confess. It's nonsense. Criminal, they are not forgiven for confessing their sins. Book of Romans chapter 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. We learned that God is righteous. God is a lawmaker and God is judge. So those who break the law, they must be judged by God, must pay the price. And then we must know that so in order to solve our sin problem, most know that I have lots of sins. People who think that um, I'm a sinner, but I didn't commit great sin, they could be people 
uh, the kind of people they have not desperate hearts for their salvation. Matthew chapter 11, Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden. We have to know we are heavy laden. Heavy laden of sin. The, also, the, the David said, he was righteous, but he said, My iniquities, my guilt, have gone over my head like a heavy burden. So heavy for me. That kind of people can be saved. I'm a great sinner. So big, too heavy for me, like this. So, God judged accurately according to the Bible. Did you know that the Bible is the only book that goes over death? Every book, they stopped in this world, but the Bible goes over death. And uh, blessed are the poor in spirit who have poor in spirit, and there is in the kingdom of heaven, and blessed are those who mourn. The famous Christian book, uh, The Pilgrim's Progress, the Christian, the beginning of that book begins with the story that he was mourning of his sin, because of sin, not because of the worldly things. He was comforted. He went to heaven. So people who have a rich heart, they cannot get salvation. Who suffer that, how can I get rid of sins? Always thinking that it can be saved. So we are poor. We are just um, the very poor uh, in spirit before God. We need to know that. And we must know I cannot remove my sin. Some people claim that, oh, from now on I will do very nicely in my life. But once you commit sin, it goes to iniquity. In, uh, the, the sin is set before God. We have set our iniquities before you. Once we commit sin, that sin is set before God. So once a person sins, uh, before God does, before God forgi forgives it, it remains. And also the things that people in our time, they do not know and misunderstand is, there is a final judge of all our actions. They do not know this fact. So that's why they're committing sin freely. If they knew that there's a final judge of all our actions after we die, then they will consider their life. But they don't know that. There is God who finally judge of all our actions. Psalm 711, God is a just judge. And God is angry with the wicked every day. The so righteous. And also people, some people misunderstand what God is like. So English poet W.H. Oden, he said, I like sin because God likes to forgive sin. And also, do you, you know the Voltaire, French um, writer, Acid, he said that God will forgive. That is his business. Wow. Understand it. So Catherine, the great emperor, empress of Russia, I shall be a dictator. That's my trademark. No matter how many times I do bad things, good God will forgive me. That's his work. Many people, they misunderstanding about God. Because the Bible said, He's not a man. Right? Man can freely forgive, freely neglect it. But God is not a man. And no shall evil dwell with you. God, the previous verse, that uh, Psalm chapter 7, God's angry with evil. Wicked thing every day. So, God has infinite justice, is absolutely holy and clean. So, sin and evil, they cannot be with God. So, the, the God takes more seriously is sin. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The people in our time. Uh, they do not know how serious sin is and how horrifying God is. So Psalm chapter 90 also said that who knows God's rest, how great is God's grace. People do not know, fully understand. So how sin is serious and then God 
destroy both soul and body in hell. And people, they misunderstand that only those who have sinned a lot go to hell. Only one sin you commit, you go to hell. Adam, he did only one sin. And all humankind were perished because of that sin. And holy angel become the devil only because of one sin. So Matthew chapter 5, who have sinned, they will be put into hell. Or surely I say to you, you will by no means get out of their hell till you have paid last one penny. God is so thorough. Because God is sinless, and heaven is a sinless place. There is no sin in, hell, in heaven. So only when you remove all your sins, then you can enter heaven. And when you are judged, where you go? Go to hell. So the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Initially, hell was prepared not for humans, but for devil. But why people go to hell? The Bible said that the heaven is prepared for humans, but they choose devil's side and they choose the hell. And who judges whom about what? The Bible said God judges. And God judges every work, including every secret thing. And in the, uh, let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. It means that you can do everything what you want, but walking in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes, especially is told to young people. But you have to know that for all these gods will bring you into judgment. So three verses, God judges us about every work, including every secret thing. So from birth to death, God will list all sins our, in our life. So for example, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 9, it shows us that we are responsible for our sin. Some people, they make excuse that even though they commit sin, oh, I, I didn't do that. The devil in my, in my heart, he did. For example, like that. But we humans have free will. There's definitely something that I did. For example, if I crashed the car and then police doesn't arrest the car, arrest me. So on judgment day, God won't judge Adam or devil, but me. So if I uh, kill a person with a knife, and then who killed? Me or Adam? Because, because Adam, I became sinner. Or my simple nature? Or devil? No, I did. In this world, why people could be punished? Because there is something we did. We abused the free will. I could not do that, but I did. Because of that, we judged. And the judgment of standard is God's law. The Bible said, the word that I have spoken, Jesus said, so what Jesus said is the Bible, the word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. So I told that different countries, different laws. So when, we, when it comes to heaven, we will be judged by the word of God. This is the word of God. And this is the standard. You have heard that it is said that those who old, old means Old Testament, you shall not murder, of course. Whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says his brother, Raka, which means bad words, curse, shall be in danger of counsel. So whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. This is God's that. And also the same chapter, you've heard that it said those Old Testament, you shall not commit adultery, is of course sin, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her, has her 
has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Committing sin with our heart is sin in God's standard. So in front of judgment seat, even the smallest sin matters. And does judgment truly exist? We have rubbish bin. Why? Because there is rubbish. We have grave. Why? There is corpse body. We have prison because there is criminal. Why there is hell? Because there is sinner before God. Matthew 3, why yawning fan? Why yawning? Why yawning? If we keep why yawning, then the, uh, the wheat, they come inside, and the chaff, chaff they go uh, fl flown away. So gather his wheat into barn, he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So through farming, God teaching us every year. Then there is heaven and there is hell and judgment. So why yawning fan is like a judgment. And our conscience is also evidence of judgment. For example, it's a newspaper from Korea. I'm a murderer from 20 years ago. This is a confession of a 40 years old man. The man was asked why he confessed the truth after 20 years. He said, I was diagnosed with rectal cancer and I wanted to put my life back into order. If only I had received the punishment of my sins, then I would have been this painful, would not have been this painful for me. So even though he was not accused in this world, but his conscience continually made painful for his life. Because his conscience knows that. So it is of evidence that there will be judgment. So this uh, we read this verse from the first the first day, the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. Our conscience will be witness. This law written in our heart. We know which is wrong and which is right. This is carved in our heart. In the day that when God will judge the secrets of man by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And also we learned many judgments in history. God always judged where there is sin. Garden of Eden, they went on the ground. Last time, the flood judgment upon them. Sodom and Gomorrah, they got punishment of brimstone and fire. Israel, in their history, we've seen the judgment. Every time God practiced judgment. And let's see the very important chapter, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. <clears throat> Verse 11. This is the final judgment seat. So I think this chapter, Revelation 20, is really, really written for our sake. So I think, what if there is no Revelation chapter 20? How can we know exactly what happened? What will happen after this? This shows us what happened after we die. Chapter 20, 11. Uh, then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it. Him means God. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. This earth, this heaven will fled away. And there were found no place for them. And 12. I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. Let's think about it. He saw Apostle John, the dead, which means death is not end. Right? They dead, but they are standing before God for their judgment. So we learned that Ecclesiastes chapter 3, who knows the spirit of son of man which goes upward. Right? And then, Books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. And 13, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hardest delivered up the dead who were in them. The sea gave up the dead means that our body resurrection. But did you know that uh, um, 
our soul and our body that will be reunited and then punished together because we use our body for our sin. So God said, our, the sea gave up the dead and, and be united and they were judged together, each one according to his work. And we know that uh, Matthew chapter 10, 28, we remember that verse, do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body. The Bible said our soul and body will punish together. And 14, then death and hardest were cast into the lake of fire. This is second death. There is second death. Our, phys our physical body will die one day, and then if we judged, and then would be second death. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into lake of fire. So I think it's extremely fortunate. Why? We knew it before we die. We understand. We learned that it's now. But the devil keeps us from seeing this. He tried to blind our eye to seeing this. There is no judgment. You can live your life on your own. But, you know, because the Bible is all true. So, this record is also true. Right? All the Bible is true. So that's why the Revelation chapter 20 is also true. So if you are not born again, and then you will stand like that people. Final judgment seat will take place. So, sum up. God's judgment to anyone according to their works by the things which were written in the books and finally they cast into the lake of fire forever. So may we, uh, we may see uh, our whole life in front of God's judgment. So this is a testimony from the new death experience people when they, uh, before they dead and al al alive again, that between that during that time they saw whole their life immediately. Can you see the video clip? It's ABC broadcasting. Need proof at all? I, I believe we have a soul, and we're on a path. And this is just a short period of of our existence. I think. While learning to fly a helicopter in 1994, Chris Walker was certain. He would die. I was with my instructor. We were coming back in toward the airport and we hit wind shear, which is a very intense downward movement of air. Essentially, we just started dropping with the air mass, which was dropping very, very rapidly. He was never injured, never unconscious. He only believed he was about to die. At that point, it's all the whole world slowed down. Everything just compressed. Time just everything slowed right down. And the ground was coming up, coming up, coming up. You're sort of watching the altimeter unwind, and you're watching the farms come up closer and closer and closer to you, and you're thinking, is this it? Is this it? Research suggests that the brain reacts in people, like me, facing death because of physical injuries, in much the same way as in those who only think they're about to die. This is when I had the, uh, the experience of seeing my whole life as, it, as if it were a film sped up very fast. While the helicopter plummeted, Chris Walker watched his life flash before his eyes. It was a blur of color. And every once in a while, you kept this just fleeting glimpse of something you recognize. It'd be places I knew, say, as a kid. It's like a packaging, almost, a packaging of all that stuff you've done to take with you to wherever you go next. They will see their whole life in the judgment seat. This is our destiny. We're born as a sinner. Then we commit sin. And someday we will die. And then there is after this judgment. And if there we have sin in the judgment seat, we go to hell. This is my destiny. This is true. So lastly, the Bible clearly says there is hell. Some people, they claim that there is no hell, but no matter how they claim that, insist that the Bible clearly said there is hell. 
That's why we are learning the Bible in this week. So many verses, not only one verse. Mark chapter 9, Matthew chapter 13, Revelation, Luke chapter 16. Many, many verses says that. For example, let's see uh, one or two verses. Uh, Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. 47 or uh, 43. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. If your hand causes you to sin and cut it off, it is better for you to enter into fire maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell. Into the fire that shall never be quenched. So for the 45, 47, 48, all the same statements. For example, 45. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame rather than having two feasts to cast into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. This text shows us that the fire in hell never be quenched and it is better for you to cut it off. Let's imagine that. 47 is about when your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. When if we, uh, if we pluck our eyes out, cut our, our hands and feet, you know, how painful, extremely painful and uncomfortable. But it is better to go to heaven with lame and maimed and one eye in heaven rather than cast into hell, which means hell is a really painful place. And also Luke chapter 16 is about once you go to hell, you never get out of there. No hope. Dante Inferno book said, describes about hell, through me you pass into the city of all. Through me you pass into eternal pain. Through me among the people lost of all. All hope abandon you who enter here. The scary the most scary thing of hell is there is no hope. The sentence of hell is not thousand years or million years or billion years, whatever you have to dare. This is the problem. And also, we have pain. God created this pain in this world to show us and warn us there's a painful place after we die. And also God is the one who created, made Son. Matthew chapter 13, it depicted the hell is a furnace of fire. Furnace of fire. You know the, what is furnace? A container that is heated at a very high temperature. So there are substance that are put inside it, which are metal, we melt and or burn. So extreme high temperature, so that it could melt metal. This is furnace fire. Jesus used this word, furnace fire, when he described hell. In Korea, there is accident that one guy fell on this furnace fire. So the, the sun is as high as the 15 million degrees Celsius. God made this sun. And also the most painful for human is burn pain. They want to die. Please kill me like that. Lava and sun we are having in this time. Lastly, uh, Revelation chapter 21. Who's going to go to heaven? A uh, hell. This we show and finish. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So here listed people who go to the terrifying thing about hell is that once you enter, you cannot come out again. So you must be saved before, before you die. So I, I rather say, if 
the hell last thousand years I could not preach. Because after sentence one thousand years, you can get out of there. Hell is might not serious if the period of the time lasts millions of years. Because after millions of years, you can get out of there. But the problem is no hope at all. And here said that firstly mentioned covertly. Why covert go to he hell? Because those who know that they need to be saved, but they do not believe boldly because they are afraid of others' attention. They are afraid people rather than hell. Those who fear the world or people more than God. And some people, they do not believe because they are afraid of material damage or opposition. And on believing, chances have been given to believe, but they deliberately rejected it. So if they believe, they thought that they cannot live their own way, so uh, they don't want God. So they go to the place there is no God. So many people are going to hell even in this time. The Bible clearly says that sinners commit sins and someday we die and after judgment we go to hell. So we need to, this is our state. The only thing we can do now is that pray to God and then if God saves me, if God delivers me, then I can be saved. So please stay after you get back your home. Um, please pray to God to save us from this sin and judgment. Have mercy on me, I am sinner. The Psalm chapter 34 said, The Lord is close to broken hearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you have broken heart, honestly ask God, and then God will save you. So tomorrow is the last day of the Bible seminar that we will learn about how God saves sinners. So I strongly urge that everyone could be uh, here to learn and listen to God's word to be saved. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father God. You showed us before we die how terrifying the judgment and how serious our sin is. So open our eyes and incline our ears so that we can see and listen to your word. We may see how serious this problem is and have honest hearts before you so that all of us May get salvation with your word and become your children. So please God have a mercy on us. We really want that every one of us can get salvation. We pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Today uh, tomorrow will uh, the the sermon will be delivered in eleven AM.